Hello everyone and welcome to another video. So today we are on to week seven of our flight mechanics course. So let's go ahead and jump through the roadmap of where we're heading this week. So if you remember, uh, we're sitting here in week seven, but what we just finished last week during week six is we basically built ourselves a nonlinear six degree of freedom model of a aircraft. And we were using this research civil aircraft or RCAM model as our sort of test bed to demonstrate these flight mechanics principles. So we built this last week and we've got now a full model. It's implemented in Simulink. It's ready to go. So we're ready to start doing some actual engineering analysis using this model. So that's what I want to talk about this week in, um, week seven is let's start down this process. The first thing that we're going to want to do now that we have this nonlinear aircraft model, one thing we like to do right off the bat is develop what are known as trim points or sometimes equilibrium points are also um, referred to. Uh, you're, we're going to talk a little bit about the nuances between a trim point and an equilibrium point, but that's the overall goal. The overall goal of week seven is to basically take our aircraft model and get it operating at a condition that we care about. So we're going to talk about what that means, how to translate things like uh, steady state, straight and level flight into mathematical constraints. But the way we're going to mechanize this this week is it's actually going to use a lot of optimization framework to do that. So um, this is maybe an interesting point to maybe pump the brakes a little bit and stop and talk a little bit about prerequisites and expectations. So coming into this class, you know, if you're from the AA516 side of things, then um, you've taken a class on linear systems or probably taken a class on optimization in the past. So I'm going to assume that the general ideas of optimization, um, both constrained and unconstrained optimization, are familiar to you. If you're coming in from the AE-512 side, then you know we covered a lot of this in AE-501 where we talked about optimization, um, again, both constrained and unconstrained. So that being said, the first thing I'm going to call to your attention is this last video here. Let's maybe start from the end. This is an optional video talking about um, optimization gradient descent. Again, this is a refresher. This should have been a prerequisite. You have, should probably have already seen gradient descent in a previous class, but if you haven't ever seen this idea, I'd recommend checking out this video because we're going to be building on a lot of these concepts. Now, that being said, uh, I would like to introduce some new optimization ideas. So that's what these first three videos are. So let's talk about these. These look at optimization, again, from sort of a sterile mathematical perspective. So forget about flight mechanics, forget about aircraft. This is just talking about mathematical optimization. So the first video here is actually, um, I, I always wrestle with the order in which to present these because this video right here is actually uh, just talking about how to use a MATLAB function called fmin search to go ahead and perform um, optimization. So we're going to look at that and we want to use fmin search for a lot of these downstream activities. So I figure it might be easiest to first introduce the idea of what is this fmin search function? What does it do? How can I call it using different parameters, different options, and basically get it to do optimization um, in different fashions? So that's what this first one is. It's really, it's just talking about MATLAB. It's a MATLAB function. We're just going to spend, you know, uh, you know, about a half hour going through a lot of different ways that we can use this because this is going to be the core um, engine that we're going to use to actually perform the optimization problems that we're going to be then developing in um Pro, uh, this lecture and this lecture. So the next two ones, the one that I have highlighted here on the screen, again, these are a sterile mathematical description on how to convert constrained optimization to, uh, to an unconstrained optimization problem using what's known as the penalty method. So that's what this first video here is. It's talking about what is this penalty method? How does it work? Um, and yeah, that's basically what this first one does. It just introduces the idea of the optimization penalty method. The next video looks at, well, how can we actually use that optimization penalty method to now solve systems of equations using that approach? So again, these two, you can, oops, sorry, let me highlight this correctly. These two, you can think about this from a pure mathematical perspective. There's no engineering. This is just pure math, okay? Now, what we are going on to do now is after we have this idea down, now we are going to translate this into an actual engineering problem and we are going to say, all right, I have this idea of how to do mathematical optimization using the penalty method. I can use this to solve systems of equations. Can I now take that idea and turn it into a system which will basically trim our aircraft and find it uh, operating conditions that relate to a specific physical condition that we care about? So 
In this particular video, what we're going to look at is how can I get our aircraft model, our rigid six degree of freedom nonlinear aircraft model, how can I get that trimmed and flying at a constant altitude, constant speed, straight um, wings level, pointing in a certain direction, right? So we're going to want to be able to, to take all of those descriptions that I just said, turn those into mathematical equations, and then apply this optimization penalty method to solve it. So again, this will make a lot more sense, I think, once you watch through these videos. And again, this is building on optimization, namely the gradient descent approach. So if you haven't seen the gradient descent or you would like a refresher, please check out this last optional video. So that's the overall roadmap of where we're going this week. You can see it's looking a lot about just mathematical optimization. And then we are also going to apply it to trimming the um, our particular aircraft. And again, I do want to maybe look a little bit ahead because you'll notice that th this is a lot of content to uh, consume right now. And actually, we're not going to be able to fully finish our trim discussion in one week. So just to keep this on your radar, next week, we will still in week eight, look at trimming, but we're going to look at using some MATLAB tools and simulating tools to do this automatically. So what we're building up during week seven is sort of code from from scratch. We're going to be hand rolling some of these systems, building these systems ourselves. But MATLAB has some tools to allow us to do this. And we're going to look at that next week. So this trimming discussion, it's really about a, you know, a one and a half week discussion. So we're going to hit the majority of it this week. And it, this will bleed over a little bit into week eight. So that's the roadmap of where we're going. Um, and maybe what we can do is let's take a look at the homework and see how we're going to reinforce some of these ideas. So the first problem, let me see if I can scroll and fit all this on one screen so we can all talk about it at once. I guess it's not going to quite fit. I mean, it's, eh, it's pretty close. Okay, this is basically problem one. And again, there's a lot of words here, but it's not actually a lot of work. All we're basically talking about is, again, this is a pure math problem. It has nothing to do with flight mechanics. Um, I'm just saying if you have some cost function like this, you can see it's sort of a two dimensional cost function, right? It's a function of W1 and W2, right? If you write this thing out at the end of the day, it's just some function where you put in W1, you put in W2, it spits out a cost associated with it. So all we're trying to do in this problem is I want you to write a basically your own gradient descent algorithm that is going to basically take this cost function, you're going to start at some guess, right? You, you, you know, let's let's assume this is the location that you're going to guess at and start. And I want you to basically write your own gradient descent program, which will go ahead and try to find the minimum. So again, to refresh your memory, and I keep keep highlighting this video, but we talked about how to do this back in this this discussion. So um, let me pull this up and maybe this will be a little bit helpful just to kind of show side by side what we're graphically talking about. So effectively, you're doing something like this picture over here, right? Where we're going to start at some location and this gradient descent algorithm that you're going to write, it's going to take constant step sizes of this, this magnitude. And you're basically going to walk down this surface, right? This 2D surface and try to find a minima. So all I'm asking for is do this. And we're not going to talk about fancy termination criteria or adaptive step sizes or anything like this. All this is doing is a constant step size for every single step. And just do this for 35 steps. So you start here at step number one and just take 35 steps with your algorithm. So literally write this in a for loop, say 4k equals one to 35, perform this algorithm. And you're going to want to see that your system does walk its way down the uh, down this this two dimensional surface. Right. And in fact, that's all these other plots are talking about is just plotting this and visualizing it and basically just making sure that we understand from a high level uh, point of view, how are these systems supposed to work? What does it look like when you're performing this numerical optimization um, for this nice two dimensional cost function? We can plot all of this in 3D and we can see how this looks and hopefully this provides some good intuitive um, understanding of how a great a numerical gradient descent algorithm works with an arbitrary cost function. Right. So again, that's all this problem one is talking about is solving it and then maybe making a couple of interesting plots um, as this occurs. So again, I'll let everyone read through this problem description um, and uh, let me know if you have questions. But again, problem one is, is I think it should be pretty straightforward. It's just doing a mathematical optimization problem. OK, now. Two is where this gets interesting. Okay, so problem one, we did figured out how to do optimization using numerical gradient descent. 
um, for this sterile mathematical problem. Now, what I want to do for problem two is we want to take our RCAM model and actually apply those mathematical ideas to this engineering system. So this is where it goes from math to engineering, right? So in this case, what I actually care about for this aircraft, right, is I want this thing flying at steady state I want it flying straight and level, meaning you're not gaining or losing any altitude. I want this flying at a very specific airspeed, and I want it um, with a heading of due north. So all of these are engineering requirements, right, that your manager might dump on your desk and say, I want the aircraft flying like this. Well, your job now as an engineer is, how do I translate these um, engineering requirements into mathematical constraints on the states or, con or controls of our RCAM aircraft, okay? Once we have that correctly translated, we can basically take the same idea we did in problem one and apply it to this particular problem. So now we are going to be basically using the optimiz uh sorry, I'm highlighting the wrong one. We're gonna be using the optimization penalty method to solve a system of equations, which is really a, um, you can kind of think of it as a constrained optimization problem, right? That's what we're doing here. So all we're doing, problem two, again, might have a lot of words, but all we're doing is translating these conditions, turning it into a math problem that looks similar to problem one, and then running a numerical gradient descent algorithm on this to see if it's going to uh, solve it. And again, what we can do is MATLAB has this great function called fmin search, i.e. what we were learning about right here. Let's see if we can get fmin search to actually perform this, this optimization for us. So problem two, it's really about just posing the problem as an optimization problem and then throwing fmin search at it, right? So that's the game plan. The end product of problem two is at the end of the day is, is in our case, it's 14 magic numbers. It's nine states and five controls that if you apply these states and these controls to your aircraft, it should be flying at this condition that we, that we stated here in part A, right? That's, that's, the, that's the, the deliverable of problem two is 14 numbers, okay? So with problem three, all we're going to want to do is make sure that we can verify that those 14 numbers that you computed in problem two are correct because the way you can do this is actually really, really simple. Now, re you remember back here, we built a Simulink model for this RCAM aircraft, right? It has states um, in the integrators. It has five control inputs for the five uh, control surface deflections. In fact, you can take the 14 numbers that you computed here in problem two, apply them to your Simulink model that we built last week, and then just hit run, hit simulate. And what we should see is the most boring plot ever in the sense that all of the traces should be constant, right? The aircraft should just be staying on condition, um, straight and level, 85 meters per second, heading north. It should just it should just keep going, right? So if you did problem two correctly, the output of, of problem three part A should be a bunch of flat simulink traces, right? Where the, the aircraft is not doing anything interesting. It's just flying straight and level at trim, like at cruise. That's the game plan, okay? So, um, if we've got that working, we can start playing some games, right? You, you, if this works, you can start asking yourselves, well, what happens if I perturb the system a little bit? Like, what if I get hit by a gust of wind or the pilot jostles the control column as we're, uh, as we're flying straight and level? What's the aircraft going to do? Well, we can start doing all of those simulations now, given the framework that we've built up. So all I want you to do in problem 3B is just play around with this, mess with the control surface deflections, change the initial conditions on the states. What happens? Just see what the system does in response to these uh, disturbances. So that's the game plan. Um, I'm really excited about this week because we're now really on our way to doing a lot of fun engineering analysis with our RCAM system. We spent six weeks developing the equations of motion and the actual aircraft model, and now we're getting to do a lot of, of, of fun engineering on it. So we're going to do some trimming right now. That's what we're talking about in week seven. But just as a quick um, preview, the idea is once we trim this, we're going to start being able to linearize 
this nonlinear aircraft model, and that opens up a whole can of worms where we can start building controllers, doing um, mode analysis, all kind of fun stuff down the road. So uh, week seven is where all the fun really starts. So please let me know if anyone has any questions. Otherwise, um, I'll look forward to talking with everyone at office hours. Otherwise, um, yeah, I think this is probably a great spot to leave it, and we can catch up over email or at uh, office hours. All right, thanks, everyone. I think I'll sign off. Bye.